one of the major contributing factors to misery in at least Western culture anyway, is this lack of self-acceptance, this inability to be able to accept ourselves for who we are and what we are. And one of the reasons why, or probably the major reason why we have this lack of self-acceptance and self-love is due to cultural and religious paradigms. And in this video, I wanted to talk about that and how we can learn to accept and love ourselves and still be spiritual beings at the same time. But before I dive into that, hi, I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com. If you're new to the channel and you're interested in Wicca or you want to become Wiccan, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss any videos. For me, the spiritual path isn't about having to perfect myself and become this perfect person in that sort of moral religious sense like many other religions do propose. For me, the spiritual path is a path that we want to walk for joy. It's something that should be about joy and happiness, feeling that joy and happiness, even when we're going through the physical miseries of life. You know, like health, pain, suffering due to things that aren't to do with self-acceptance. It's about being able to walk the, a path that has heart and a path that is joyful, where we're not beating ourselves up all of the time because we made a mistake or we're not perfect or we have a shadow self that we're embarrassed about or ashamed about. It's finding a way to accept ourselves for who we are and make the most of what we have and to be able to find the gifts in everything about ourselves and the world around us. Wicca is a religion about life. It's not about preparing for the next life. It's not about having to focus on going without in this life in order to have some kind of paradise in the next. We're very much focused on being here in this life and bringing all those wonderful spiritual things down to earth and being able to channel the spiritual energy to make the world a better place, to help make our own lives better. And when we can make our own lives better, when we're happier, people around us are going to be happier too because we're going to be acting in ways that actually help other people also feel better about themselves. So for me, the self work, the work that we do on ourselves to be able to have this joy is more important than the magic even, more important than the spells, more important than learning how to cast circles, more important than even learning to work with the elements, with the spirits, connecting with deities. It's really that journey into who are we and what on earth are we doing here? <laughs> And how do we go about finding those things? To me, that's what a spiritual path is. And for me, I just happen to resonate with the path of Wicca. Now, there's many spiritual paths out there and people resonate with different paths. That is great. That is fantastic. Don't have a problem with that. I'm talking about Wicca and I also wanted to talk about how some of the spiritual paradigms of the past have actually contributed to our human misery rather than actually making us uh, happier people. So in some par paradigms, and I'm not going to mention which ones they are, you know which ones they are, is that we're imperfect beings and that there is a created deity out there who hates us, who thinks we're bad people, we've been brought here because we're being punished and somehow we have to prove ourselves in order to reach some kind of paradise. All that does is causes us to hate ourselves. All that does is cause ourselves to beat ourselves up. Now, I'm not saying that we should just run amok and do whatever and, you know, who cares what we, we rape and pillage and harm. I'm not advocating that at all. In fact, when we really do tune into who we really are and learn to love and accept ourselves and the whole entire polarity of the shadows and the light within ourselves, we actually do become more productive people and we actually do become more compassionate and loving people. So it's not like learning to love and accept ourselves warts and all. <laughs> and, you know, considering witchcraft and caricatures, that's kind of a pun, I guess. It's not looking at these things as being bad, you know, we're, we're looking at 
accepting these things about ourselves and learning how we can work with them in ways that are actually productive. And this comes from understanding the hermetic principles like the law of the principle of polarity, which I've talked about in other videos, and also understanding um, ourselves and who we are. So if you are finding that a lot of what's going on in your life, like you're not able to achieve the things you want to achieve, you don't feel uh, comfortable within yourself, there's maybe a lot of shame, there could be social anxiety or just self-doubt. A lot of this is to do with this belief that we're not good enough and that we somehow have to atone for our sins or even in the self-help world we have to somehow get fixed, we have to raise our vibration or there's always something that we've got to do to fix ourselves and to become perfect people, which I did a video just recently on perfection. So perfection doesn't even really exist anyway. So we have to stop doing this. We have to stop looking at this belief that the spirits are somehow hate us and that the only way that we can become uh, enlightened or be joyful is when we're dead or that we somehow have to atone for our sins. And some of this stuff that's come from these other religious paradigms has infiltrated into modern paganism, into Wicca. They're, some of the concepts of good and evil and have penetrated into the craft. And also these, these beliefs, this Western notion of karma has trickled into the craft. So many of these things where we're actually looking very dualistic at ourselves and very dualistically at the world around us. And there is no principle of dualism. There is only a principle of polarity. So if you're finding self-acceptance and self-love may be an issue for you, I would recommend one step to get started. And that is to start journaling in some way, shape or form. If you're not a writer, you might want to use your phone and actually record yourself speaking into the phone. You may be somebody who likes to speak out loud. So just speak out loud and allow yourself to be able to hear what you're saying or write these things down. But you need to take some time out for yourself and listen to yourself and tune into what it is that you're feeling when you're feeling discomfort about yourself. If you're feeling like you're beating yourself up, you're feeling self-doubt, rather than trying to run away from it, which actually only makes it worse, it makes you feel worse, to actually come in and look at how your body's feeling with this sensation of self-doubt. How does that feel in the body? And just allow yourself to meditate on the feeling that your body is experiencing. When you bring things into your bodily experience, you actually start to ground yourself and the discomfort actually starts to wane. It, it loses that grip on you because that's part of yourself is telling yourself that something is wrong. And so you need to take time out and just sit and listen to it and allow your body to experience whatever that feeling feels like in your body. Where do you feel it? And just focus on the sensation. Become curious about how you feel, about what you think. Become curious about what it is that is causing the self-doubt. Become curious about where does the shame lie? Where does the self-betrayal lie? Where do these things lie uh, within your psyche and where are they manifesting in your body? Because you will feel these things in your body. You know you're having a sensation of self-doubt when you because you feel it in the body. And so bringing it into the body through just listening to how, where you, what your body's feeling, like there'll be muscle tension, there may be an upset stomach, you may feel tension in your shoulders, there may be like tingling sensations. There can be all sorts of sensations that go on in your body to make you know that you're having an emotional reaction. So tuning into that physical sensation just allows you to ground that energy and it actually allows that energy to start to get rooted down into the ground and move somewhere so that it's not getting stuck. And when you're journaling, you're simply asking yourself 
you're having it's like you're having a conversation with yourself ask this part of you this part of you of self-doubt ask it what is it that it wants to say to you what is it telling you isn't safe about maybe something that you're aiming for or whatever has brought up the misery ask ask it to explain to you what is going on so it's like you're having a conversation with someone and working with this in a bit of a gestalt way you may even find that this this doubting voice or this critical voice or this judgmental voice whatever part you're working with may actually have like an image you may see it like it may take the image of a person it may take the image of a character from a movie or from a book or it may take a color or it may take a shape or it may take some other it could be an animal it could be anything a subconscious mind is brilliant with bringing up um, all sorts of things when it comes to this kind of work but just speak to it and write down have a conversation with it ask it questions and then just write down what you feel it's saying back to you about your situation so that you can learn where the doubts come from and you can start to learn more about why you're behaving the way you're behaving why you do the things that you do what's really at the base of it so that you can start to understand yourself because self-acceptance and self-love come from self-understanding and listening to yourself the first step towards self-acceptance is to start taking time out for yourself and start listening to what's going on in the subconscious mind and this mystical uh, desire this this search for the beloved which is kind of that mystical trip that um, from the mystical side of things is that search for the self it's that search for our higher self our true self who we really are and what we're really doing here and unfortunately most religions pinch us off from that we get pinched off from ourselves because we're too busy focused on what's going on outside of ourselves and having to achieve some kind of perfection rather than really learning who we really are and working with trying to have that that mystical union with that higher self that higher being that is connected to the gods and goddesses and is connected to all and everything and this is what I call shadow work I see shadow work as being bigger than the Jungian definition that it encompasses much more self uh, learning than just dealing with parts of ourselves that we don't like that inner getting to know you kind of thing with yourself is the way to happiness it really is uh, if you're feeling like you've got a lot of self-doubt fine look for a spell but a spell isn't going to change things for you permanently it may make you feel good for a day or two but it's not actually going to make permanent changes because the mystical work is different to the magical work so the magical work is practical it gets stuff happening it's great for situations great for influencing the environment but when it comes to oneself that's the work of the mystic that's the work of connecting to the higher self or the beloved as it's sometimes referred to and of course if you want help with that or if you at least want some clarity about where to go next in your self-exploration work then do book a free clarity session with me it's a 30 minute session I ask you lots of questions to get you clear about what's keeping you stuck and then if you're interested in working with me to help you with that side of things then we can talk about um, by coaching so I can coach both in regards to that self-exploration as well as uh, the Wiccan witchy stuff as well at the same time the link to my booking calendar is in the description field below the video if you like the video hit the like button share it with your friends don't forget to subscribe and I'm Sandra from mysterywitchschool.com and I'll see you on the next video blessed be mm -hmm.